for coloring. Is that centered? Okay. Ah. All right, first of all, explain to the students about their light source. Over here I have my light source in the upper left-hand corner. And wherever the light hits on the shrubs, the rocks, the sky, the road, will be the lightest value. Where, where as the trees and shrubs turn away from the sun, that becomes the medium value. And away, the furthest away from the sun will be the darkest value. So I'm going to use, first of all, for, for the shrubs, just a medium green. Just a regular green that's in the oil pastel box. Just color, 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 solid. Have the students color solid because a lot of times they're going to want to scribble, scribble, scribble. So just the younger students can go in a circular pattern to fill in the space. The older, can, uh, older students can just mass in with the side of the pastel. Okay, there's a shrub. So the lightest part of that shrub will be yellow. So I use a yellow oil pastel for the lightest part of the shrub where the sun is hitting. And the darkest part of the shrub will be dark green, the furthest away from the sun. To make it really intense, I used black uh, for the dark areas. Black is a nice color to punch in some dark volume here. And then I went over it again with a dark green to camouflage the black. So it gives you more volume. Then I go back over the regular green again. So it's a back and forth effect, blending the edges to lose that hard edge. And then I highlight with my yellow or yellow green, depending on what you have in your box for the closest part of the sun. So there's, there's one shrub right there. And that's what you would do for the shrubs all the way across the page. For the rocks, I used a beige for the base. So I just color in solid. This is kind of a peach or a beige color that's in the pastel box. It's the only one I could find. So I color in my rocks, the lightest color. Then I go to my darkest color, which is black for the areas where the sun isn't hitting. So to give it a three-dimensional feel, I really push the darks with a black here. Okay, so next I'm going to use a medium value, which could be a medium brown or a reddish brown, depending on warm or cool. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go for a nice warm look. So I'm gonna use a medium brown to blend across the lines that separate the light from the dark. Next, I'll use the color gray to blend the whole mass together of rocks to make them look realistic. If you want highlights, you can use white. If you really want to knock some light in there where the sun's hitting, you can even use a white. All right, so next we're going to go to the, the cumulus clouds, which is my favorite. First of all, I color my clouds white. Mass that white in. Color solid. So I'm coloring, coloring as hard as I can. Next, I'm going to put in my dark areas, which will be gray. So the sun's hitting here. So where everywhere the rays hit, I go away from that to the far right and put in a gray. I may throw some black in here to push it a little. Okay, next I think I'll, I will use some black. Just a little tiny bit. Black goes a long ways. Then blend again with white. A 
add some more gray for the middle, middle value. And if you find that you're not getting the middle value you want, you can add blue. That will be behind the clouds. I'll add a little of this because I don't, I don't like what I'm getting here. So I'm going to add a little blue to reflect the light from behind the clouds or the color. Then blend over it again with white. In a circular motion, you get more of a rounded look on your clouds for the cumulus effect. Okay, behind the clouds, there's a blue, a medium blue, or inside each box. Don't use the dark blue. And just color around the clouds, covering up the line you drew the clouds with. You can even use jagged coloring to make it look more realistic. Solid blue. And then I'm going to go back over the light edges of the cloud again on top of the blue to give it more of a realistic or atmospheric look. Okay, so there's your clouds. You can also have color reflecting from down below into the clouds, like a little brown if you want, but that's for the older kids. Okay, next we're going to do the road. So I start the road with beige or this peach color because I can't find a beige in my box. Next, I'm going to go ahead and put my blacks in. So there's going to be black away from the sun here, casting a shadow. And there's going to be black here where the rocks and the bushes line along the road, just reflective, you know, shadows that are cast from the object standing above this part of the road. So I'll just add a little bit of shadow there. And then blend in my colors brown. Blah, 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 brown, brown, brown. Gray. really throw those colors in there and blend because it's just it's it's a road and you can pretty much put the earth tones in there and just blend them together and then for the highlights I'll use white where the Sun is hitting it's not showing up so I'll go back to peach to give it a warm effect All right, so that's how you mass in the color around the cutout figures. And then when you're done, you have your own surrealistic, is that centered? I'm trying to center this, help. You have your own surrealistic masterpiece series. And for a prime example of this particular project, look at Rene Marguerite's Annunciation 1930 online. There's a project similar to this, and it's all about surrealism and blending values and color. That's it for now. Yeah, that's on the thing.